think there, there comes a point in the spiritual journey where you can start to become aware of things that you're avoiding, and that's quite a, a helpful thing to just start to become just aware of what it is. Um, in this case, the fear of non-existence. Um, for many people, it's it's something a little more specific than that. So you, oftentimes they say, what you resist, you persist, and and so there's a sense of a, like an opportunity to move through something that I think is very very helpful, and it's happened to me. I mean, when I was extremely shy, um, and I knew that I wanted to kind of to go past that that experience of being so shy and being such a fixed experience that there were certain classes that I took in university, like counseling classes and things where I felt like, okay, I'm going right at that feeling of, of shyness. Um, or like years ago there was this sense of, of going to, to the hospital for a, a, a tonsillectomy or something and, and taking the blood from the fingers and then looking at the blood and getting very nauseous and you know, like, I better get the smelling sauce quicker or I'm going to pass out. And noticing, hmm, just, hmm, I've got an association with, with what seems to be my blood. There's some kind of an association in there which I don't know and I don't understand. I just feel like I'm going to pass out when I see it. <laughs> and then having an opportunity a few years later to be a part of a vegetarian study where they would literally take take the blood on a regular basis and thinking, hmm, that's no accident that that would arise to give me a chance to more fully ex face and, and in some, some sense confront that feeling um, of wherever there's an association. So, so um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, I think, you know, your brother's just saying, it's it's exciting, I'm going to kind of expose myself to this again, and I'm going to gain something from this. Whether I seem to have a loosening from it, and a passing through it, or whether I start to have a realization like, well, this is, I'm not ready to uh, to go there right now. And, and, and start to see that either way, there's a, there's a sense of a benefit spiritually. Instead of just staying, kind of keeping away from it and kind of running from it. I think people have that feeling too when they meet somebody, a relationship starts and they go, uh oh, here we go. I'm going to have to face this and this and this. And that's the time to really stand in and allow those emotions to come up and actually face them and work through them instead of just trying to bolt and run away and hide and guard against them. So then, what's the distinction then? Because we don't like, ever say, we could, like, don't go looking for the fear necessarily, and it's not mastery through fear. We've been talking about that a bit in our small group. It's really like a mastery through following the joy. So where does the, the line come there? Well, it's with the fear. However, the fear comes up. You know, that's where the the block is to block to consistently experiencing the joy and the, and the love. So, I've always felt that it is a path of negation. You start to get in touch with the blocks and then allow them to be removed or to allow them to be negated, which is a way of like clearing the lens so more light can shine through and you can experience the love more consistently. So, so um, it's not like you go looking for it, but it's like when it presents itself, you are very, very sure that you're not going to disguise it or try to push it down or protect against it or hide it. It's more of a, like a welcoming. It sounds almost strange to welcome darkness when it arises, but actually when you start to see the value of it, it's more like, like oh, okay, here it comes. And you, um, it's like more you can give it a welcome, like, you know, I'm not, I would like to move through this, and feel this, and um, 
as you're as it's moving through and you seem to be in it, of course there's an impetus uh, to let it go, and um, that's why instead of going searching for it, it's more like uh, in in community and in, in relationships and also in meditation practice, those things will will keep coming and coming. Not that you're digging for them, they just keep coming and coming and and in that sense to, to welcome them. Yep. I know the early years when I was out traveling, it, it, I felt a lot of intense emotions and ego was over there chirping away going, how are you going to talk to groups and everything when you're so emotionally unstable, uh, you know, you can feel like you can turn on a dime, some of these sharp emotions come and this and this, and, and it was a walk of trust, and it felt like, I guess when you start to take the lid off of, of the hiding and protecting of those emotions, it, it gets very intense. It felt almost like I was, I could kind of look for a visual in my mind, but it was like, like you're in, in Maui, and, and you're surfing, and you've just caught the big wave, and you're like, up on your surfboard on the big wave, and this powerful wave is right underneath you, and you're, it's kind of a balancing going on, like you're on the surfboard, psychically balancing, and it's a feeling like if you don't stay, we were talking about attentive, if you don't really stay attentive here, you could, you could flip forward and just get crushed by the wave, or you could just go whing and just go flipping right off the back, you know, like it's rolling right under you, and you're right on the edge of something that's very powerful beneath. That was the experience I had when I started to go through this stuff. And I was like, wow, there's nothing that's prepared me for this, you know. And then being out on the road, meeting new people, new places to stay, there wasn't anything familiar that I could like grab onto, like a hole to dive into. I felt like I was totally raw, totally exposed, and things were coming at me so fast that I can now see that there was a great benefit there. The Spirit's like, trust, got you, I've got you, trust, trust, trust. But I had to trust, you know, with like, it seems like every turn, there were meeting new people, new opportunities, invitations, so much coming that it's like, okay, okay, show me, show me the way, you know, it, and it really does develop that sense of, of, of tuning in, listening and following much, much sharper than to be kind of playing it safe, which, which I see a lot of denial and repression was what I call playing it safe, which I wasn't, it wasn't safe at all. You're sitting on a volcano that's, <laughs> that could erupt at any moment and and just stuffing down all that energy like, oh, it's not there. You know, <laughs> keep it together. Keep your keep your life small and little and regulated. You know, yeah, yeah as if that's gonna gonna do it. So, so it was it was quite. Um, it was it required a lot of attentiveness to to hang in there with the spirit. I think too, you know, everyone's talking about how to live on planet Earth, and, and when we talk about spiritual communities, consensus is a way that, that comes to mind, you know, where you just have an agreement, you keep coming to agreements, and it just, for most people it just seems impractical, but then the deeper you get tuned in and you share the same purpose, at some point this whole consensus model has to flip from being completely impractical to Oh, it's looking more and more like the only way to go. And not so much a consensus where it's all these separate people have to all come to an agreement, but it's more that you, you find yourself more and more in alignment, and it's more just understood. Like, oh, we're going to do this. Great! You know, there's a feeling of like you're flowing with it. You're flowing with, with what's for your greatest good, not, you know, trying to figure out who's going to make the decisions, who are the leaders, who are the followers, you know, who, who is governing us now, who has the power, all these kind of things that seem extremely important to the ego start to fade into more of a telepathic experience 
where it's like, oh, it's, everything is being taken care of. And I noticed that here in Mallorca last year, we had, I don't know, 20-some, 30 people and two villas and with transportation, food, outings, all kinds of things. It just felt like as we moved on in the experience, it just became more and more telepathic. Like these concerns and these fears just started to drop and fade. Like, oh, we, this is fun. We're having a ball here. This isn't a problem at all. This is a fun way to live. And, and people were getting into the vibe and the flow. Synchronicities happening. Oh, how am I going to get over there? Will there be a ride? And, oh, there's another, there's still another space in that car right there. Okay, I'm coming. Hold on, don't go. You know, it just was like more a reflection of mind. Like you have a little whim for something and then it's just there. Not that you've got to go through all these steps and planning and working and figuring out and, you know, in a kind of an analytical way. That's just very tiring to try to figure this world out and, and act accordingly. It's like, it's actually insane when you think of it. And, and it's interesting me talking about it because when I was back in uh, high school, they started telling me I had a very, very right analytical mind. You know, they didn't say it's worthless, but they, they <laughs> said, you know, it, it was kind of held up as this great thing and they were steering me towards engineering and, you know, ways that I could tap into whatever, mathematics and things. And then, then when I got into, uh, yeah, university, tried out engineering and urban planning, some of these things, it just, it just didn't have a sense of resonance or joy. It didn't matter how good the analytical mind was, it just didn't resonate. It didn't feel like that was the way. That, that was the, not the calling of my heart or the calling of my life. So, progressively I just seemed to get more and more intuitive and, and less and less analytical until it was like an eclipse, like just turn, 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 and then it was like, okay, oh, there goes the analytical now, the turning toward the intuitive. And then, more and more you just, you actually realize that you can be 100% intuitive. Actually, you don't need to rely on past learning for anything. But it just takes practice. 